Hi, in this lesson, we'll take a deeper look at traversing 2D arrays. In the last lesson, we learned that we can store arrays within other arrays. These 2D arrays can be written and visualized as a grid, where the rows of the grid represent the arrays stored within the 2D array. And each column represents an individual value stored within the 1D array, which is stored in the 2D array. When attempting to access all elements in a 2D array, we can do so in two different ways. The first way is row major order. Row major traversals traverse the 2D array by accessing each value in a row before moving to the next row. The other way is column major order. Column major searches each column down all rows before moving to the next column. In this lesson, we are going to take a deeper look into how we can traverse 2D arrays in both column and row major order. Traversing using row or column order can depend on the task that is being completed. For example, if we wanted to print all the test scores for exam 1, it would make more sense to do a row traversal so as to get all the values for the first exam. And if we wanted to print all the test scores for an individual student, it would make more sense to use column major traversal to access that student's data across all exams. Let's first look at row major traversal for this particular task of printing all test scores for a specific exam. Because we are only traversing an individual array in the 2D array, this traversal looks very similar to the 1D traversals we have been doing. Let's look at this in action. The for loop is iterating from the value 0 to the last value of the array at position 0 in the 2D array. When we print out the values in this for loop, we only want to access gradebook 0, which is the first array in the gradebook. This is because we want to print all the values for the first exam for all students. We then iterate through the array by accessing the individual indices within the array at index 0 in the 2D array. Each time through, the loop will print one value across the array until the first array has printed. The end result will look as such. Each value from the first array will be printed on a separate line, and the program will stop executing. For column major traversal, the algorithm looks very similar. Instead of traversing the length of a single array, we need to traverse the length of the entire gradebook. This ensures that each array within the 2D array gets searched. Additionally, the constant in the print statement swaps positions. Because we only wanted to access data for the second student, the constant that needs to be set is the column index value. This ensures that the value stored at index 1 in each array will be accessed. Now the for loop will iterate from array at index 0 to the final array in the 2D array, accessing index 1 in each array. After the for loop is completed, the output should reflect all values at index 1 from all arrays in the 2D array. The former two traversals only produced output for a specific column or row. We can also traverse the entire 2D array by using a nested loop. We can take the initial traversal that we used to access exam 1 scores and make it a nested loop so as to access all values in the 2D array. The outer for loop iterates through each array in the 2D array, while the inner for loop iterates through each value in the current array. Let's take a look at this in action. In the outer for loop, we initialize the value row to 0. This will represent the first index in the 2D array, highlighted here. The first call in the outer for loop is another for loop. The inner for loop initializes the call variable to 0. When this for loop executes, it takes the values of row and call and accesses the index of gradebook, and then the index of the returned array. In this case, the value at gradebook 00, 0 is 90. This value is printed in the console. The inner for loop continues and call is increased by 1. Now the value at index 1 in the first array is printed, which is 87. As call increases each iteration through the for loop, the values in the initial array are printed to the console until the array reaches the end. Now the inner loop ends and a print line is called to start the next array on the next line in the console. The outer loop now increases the value of row by 1, which will allow the gradebook to access the array at index 1. The inner loop executes again and initializes call. Now, index 0 in the second array in the 2D array 
which is value 65, is printed to the console. This for loop continues to iterate until every value in the second array in the 2D array is accessed and printed to the console. As the row continues to increase, each set of values will be printed to the console until the length of the 2D array is reached. The 2D traversal that we just explored uses row major order. To access 2D arrays in column major order, we can do so by making a small adjustment to the row major algorithm. If we switch the placement of the row and column when accessing the gradebook, this will change the way that the 2D array is traversed. With the switch, the outer loop row now represents the column and the inner loop column represents the row. As the column variable iterates, it moves through each row value, while the variable row stays on the same column value. Let's take a quick look at how this works. Just as in the row major traversal, the row and call variables are first initialized to zero, and the first value, gradebook 00, is printed to the console. Once we pass the first index, however, things change. Because the call and row variables have swapped places in the traversal, the call represents the row of the 2D array, and the row represents the column. When we move to the next call value of 1, the 2D array will search for the index at position gradebook 1, 0, which in this case is 65. As call increases, row remains at 0, allowing the traversal to go down the column through each row, all the way from the first row to the last. As row increases through each iteration of the outer loop, this process repeats itself with the each column. And the values printed to the console will be by column until all of the columns are printed out. It's important to note that while column ordering can be useful depending on the circumstance, Java traverses more efficiently using the row major ordering. We will explore this a bit more in one of the exercises to follow. We can also write traversals using enhanced loops. The outer loop of the enhanced loop needs to be an array data type so as to access each array within the 2D array. And the inner loop needs to be the data type of the array that is being accessed. In this case, because the array stores int values, the inner loop should be initialized to an int value. Just as arrays used linear search to find elements, 2D arrays can also use linear search to find values. Here is the general algorithm for searching a 2D array. In the case of 2D arrays, each row needs to be searched individually. We can see that the outer loop simply accesses each individual row of the 2D array, while the inner loop is applying search to the array. If the item is not found in any of the arrays, then the return value indicating that the key cannot be found should be placed outside of both loops. This is to ensure that this only returns if none of the arrays in the 2D array contain that particular value. Just like arrays, 2D arrays have a series of standard algorithms that can be used to traverse their values. You need to be familiar with these algorithms for the AP exam. Just like arrays, we can traverse through mathematical computations. We can do so by initializing a value, like sum, before the nested for loops and then performing calculations on the array values within the inner for loop so that all values in the 2D array are added to the final calculation. We can then report results after the nested loop is finished executing. If we want to determine if elements have a particular property, we can initialize a tracker value before the nested for loop traversal and then conditionally check for that tracker while traversing the array. If we want to make alterations to the list by reversing the order or shifting the elements, the general format requires that we create a new 2D array that will then hold the values in the order that we would like to rearrange them. Each iteration through the initial array will add a value from the initial array to the altered array. Now that you've learned about traversing 2D arrays, let's get some practice in the editor.